Hello and welcome to a brief lecture on composition basics and the writing process. In this day and age, we teach writing as a process as opposed to uh, a pursuit that's more just product based. So the process is very simple. Um, you might see different versions of this in different texts, but the one we're going to focus on just has three steps, pre-writing, writing, and rewriting, very simple. So let's just begin with pre-writing and we'll work our way through the process. So pre-writing is very important to the entire writing process because so many of the decisions you make early on will inform how the rest of the process goes. So it's very important that you be aware of pre-writing steps and how you use or don't use them. And let's face it, a lot of us don't use many, if, if any, of these pre-writing uh, steps, but they're all worth considering. For instance, outlining up here. I, I'm not an outliner. I never have been. If it doesn't work for you, I'm not trying to get you to incorporate things that just don't work for you, but I think you need to think about trying some of them. So planning, brainstorming, outlining, mapping, and the big one, procrastinating. I know that maybe that doesn't make any sense because we think of procrastinating as not getting around to it. Well, what we're not getting around to, though, is step two, which is the writing. Um, during the pre-writing stage, oftentimes when we're procrastinating, you could also think of that as incubating. You know, you have this idea, and it's kind of, you know, present in your mind, and you're, you know, driving to school or driving to work or sitting at home watching TV, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, the prompt for your paper will come back into your head, and you spend some time thinking about it, you decide you don't really want to do anything at that time, but still, I think it's worthwhile to, to recognize that um, if managed properly, that procrastination can be a, a useful part of your writing process. Something else I want you to think about uh, with regard to pre-writing um, is where you write and what creates the right environment for you to be able to sit down in that chair and know that you're going to hammer some words out on that keyboard. So consider your ideal writing environment. Some people have to have music on. Some people like to watch TV while they write. For me, I'd like to be at home by myself. No distractions whatsoever. I used to have another thing I have up here is uh, make writing a ritual. When I was in graduate school, I found a ritual that worked for me. And it, it sounds kind of ridiculous. My wife loved this one. But I would not sit down to start writing a paper until the house was clean. That's how badly I didn't want to sit down and write. I would rather clean the house than write. Once I clean the house, there's nothing left to do but sit in the chair and get the job done. So we have to recognize that for a lot of us, getting ourselves into that chair, getting started is one of the hardest things. Being aware of what the right environment is, what rituals will help you, all those things will help you get in that chair and get the job done. So pre-writing, very important. Think about it. How does it work for you? The next stage is obviously in the chair, at the keyboard, getting the job done. Um, and what I want to talk, talk about here with regard to writing actually has more to do with um, how we structure the basic academic essay. The whole point of English 101 is to prepare writers to be successful college level essay writers. Um, it's important then that you understand what some of the basic expectations are, or, or as I would term them, term them, in this case, minimum expectations. So probably long ago you learned about the five paragraph essay. Um, or if you haven't, not, not, here you are learning about it now. <clears throat> um, in the five paragraph essay, you begin with an intro, you end with a conclusion, and you have body paragraphs in the middle that's very simple. Um, now, again, this is a minimum expectation. Some people were taught to write five paragraph essays as early as you know, middle school, and certainly by high school. So now that you're at the college level, we're looking to actually probably begin writing more sophisticated papers, with more paragraphs. But I always want you to keep in mind for this class, and really for you know, any of your college classes, don't turn in essays that have fewer than five paragraphs in them. So let's talk first about the introduction real quickly here. Uh, an introduction always has two elements, background information and a thesis statement. 
So students are always trying to figure out what do I put into an introduction? How do I get my paper? A lot of times we're taught at younger levels that you should try to put in this attention grabber. While that's a good idea, I think that there's sort of a logical problem with that, and that's that you want your entire paper to be grabbing your reader's attention. So the whole idea that you begin with one and then move away from that, to me, can be a little misleading. But you have to have background information. Always at the beginning of the paper, readers need to know, um, you know things about, let's say you're writing a paper on a controversial issue, the death penalty. Well, they're going to need to know some of the background information on the history of that particular controversial issue. Um, and you can apply that to anything in this in the conflict narrative you write at the beginning of this class. Um, types of background information <clears throat> that readers are going to need would include information about the setting of the story, when it's taking place, where it's taking place, and about the characters who are the people who are interacting within this essay. The second thing, of course, is the thesis statement. The dreaded thesis statement it, you know, plagues many a paper trying to get this figured out and get it done right. Um, but a thesis statement, in, in essence, is a very simple thing. And I don't mean to oversimplify it. I'll talk about it more as the semester goes on. We'll focus on it as much as we need to. But basically what it does is, at the beginning of the paper, it expresses the writer's position or focus. Position on a statement, say like the death penalty you're writing in an argumentative paper on the death penalty and, and you need to express in the introduction to your thesis statement whether you agree or disagree with the death penalty. That would be your position or focus. Um, in other words, if, if it's a paper that's not argumentative or persuasive in nature, then maybe you just need to establish what the focus of that essay will be. All right, uh, body paragraphs are kind of self-explanatory. I mean, this is just where, you know, the content of your essay resides. And in order to keep this thing moving, I, I just want to, right now, I want to jump down to the conclusion and, and talk about the conclusion for just a second. So, a lot of times, I think we're a little bit confused about what to do with the conclusion. As you probably recognize, there are um, a couple of traditional things we're taught to do with a conclusion. Um, you know, summarize your main points, restate the thesis, stuff like that. All of that makes for a terrible snore fest, in my opinion. I mean, I think we are obligated to recap things a little bit in the conclusion, but it just makes for such, you know, boring and even painful reading whenever the only thing that's happening is kind of the restatement of things that have been said previously. So I really like the concept of um, saving something for the conclusion. Again, going back to pre-writing, think about all those times when you are procrastinating, but you know, you're also brainstorming a little bit, your mind is on the topic of your paper that you have to write that's due next week. And you're trying to come up with ideas, and you always start kind of a collection of things you know you want to say in the paper. Um, observations, judgments, facts, a quote you heard, whatever the case might be. My recommendation is to save one of those things for the end of the paper. It helps you finish strong. I use this little analogy too of a, of a trip with um, essay writing. So imagine that you know you have a trip, you begin in New York City. You go to Washington, D.C., you pass through Southern Illinois, you go to Salt Lake City, and the destination is supposed to be L.A. But <clears throat> what we've taught students to do for, for too long is instead of really arriving at this new place, is after SLC is to head back to NYC and just restate everything from you know, the beginning of the paper or the beginning of the trip in this goofy analogy. So what we want to make sure to do is, is you know, really fully arrive at this new place. You know, continue taking the reader somewhere in the conclusion so that it, it's not this part of the paper that just the, the reader wants to overlook. Um, 
I did want to mention up here too that um, for, for myself as a teacher um, and as a reader, you know, I really appreciate well-developed paragraphs within essays as well. We've got five paragraphs as a minimum expectation, and I think five sentence paragraphs ought to be a minimum expectation as well. There are probably exceptions to this, times where a paragraph just doesn't require five sentences. Maybe you have a couple really long sentences in there, so it sort of makes up for it. But you always need to think about it. Topic sentences are very important in academic essays, and I will lean on you heavily to, to write effective topic sentences. They need ample support, and you need to think about how you transition from one paragraph to the next. Sometimes that comes as part of a topic sentence in the next paragraph. Sometimes you use that final sentence in the paragraph to create the transition. All right, so uh, just to recap here, uh, we talked about the writing process today. We talked um, about pre-writing and writing. Um, now we need to address rewriting or revision. Um, everybody knows this is commonly the most troublesome um, stage in the writing process because we feel like we've already done the work and we really don't want to do any more. Sometimes we're even sort of in love with the work we've done and we just don't see, we're incapable of seeing, we don't have the objectivity to see how our papers can still benefit from more work and changes. There's a lot of different things that can happen though in the uh, rewriting stage. We have editing, which would be actually going in and changing or tinkering with the content of the paper. There's proofreading, which is uh, identifying and fixing grammatical and stylistic uh, issues. One thing that you may find useful uh, for yourself and, and just the way you work is uh, the track changes um, tools within you know, Microsoft Word and, and other um, word processing programs. Um, you can enable those. They allow you to sort of see where you've made your changes within your paper. Later on, you can go and, and delete those out. Peer review um, doesn't work real well in an online setting, but it is a, a valid approach to the revision process. And then the big one is instructor's comments. The way we work in English 101 and, and this section of English 101 is that you'll always have two drafts of any major essay, and on that first draft, after you submit it to me, I will provide you with ample feedback. Um, in many ways, that feedback is itself a, a roadmap of sorts uh, to success for you. You know, you, you follow all the changes I'm telling you to make, and, and chances are you're going to get, um, you know, an A, B, or, or a C. All right. Well, I think that about wraps it up uh, for this particular lecture. Um, as always, if you have any questions, please um, post them on Desire to Learn or send me an email. Thanks.